Very warm welcome to you all. Before we begin this celebration, we uh, have a tradition now of, we've brought it back into place, of having prayer partners. And the idea is that you just turn to somebody near you, find out their name, and commit yourself to pray for that person. So just one person that you perhaps didn't come with, name and commit yourself to pray for that person. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Uh, brothers and sisters, today is the fifth Sunday of Lent. In two weeks' time, we will be celebrating Easter. And over the last time, when we've been going through this pandemic, uh, there has been a, uh, an initiative of the the bishops of Europe, that different bishops are asked to offer mass on different days for an end to the pandemic. And uh, this has come round to here, to me, to us uh, this morning. So I ask you perhaps to join your own prayers to that. So I will be offering this mass for an end to the pandemic. And uh, let us all pray for this intention so that we can move beyond this particular suffering that the world has been enduring. We come before the Lord and we begin our Mass by asking for his mercy upon us and upon the whole world and for the forgiveness of our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, 
forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. We beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who made a way through the sea, a path in the great waters, who put chariots and horse in the field, and a powerful army, which lay there never to rise again, snuffed out, put out like a wick. No need to recall the past. No need to think about what was done before. See, I am doing a new deed. Even now it comes to light. Can you not see it? Yes, I am making a road in the wilderness, paths in the wild. The wild beasts will honor me, jackals and ostriches because I am putting water in the wilderness, rivers in the wild, to give my chosen people drink. The people I have formed for myself will sing my praises. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. I believe nothing can happen that will outweigh the supreme advantage of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For him I have accepted the loss of everything, and I look on everything as so much rubbish. If only I can have Christ and be given a place in him. I am no longer trying for perfection by my own efforts, the perfection that comes from the law. But I want only the perfection that comes through faith in Christ, and this from God and based on faith. All I want is to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and to share his sufferings by reproducing the pattern of his death. That is the way I can hope to take my place in the resurrection of the dead. Not that I have become perfect yet. I have not yet won, but I am still running, trying to capture the prize for which Christ Jesus captured me. I can assure you, my brothers, I am far from thinking that I have already won. All I can say is that I forget the past and I strain ahead for what is still to come. I am racing for the finish, for the price to which God calls us upwards to receive in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At daybreak, he appeared in the temple again. And as the, all people came to him, he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and Pharisees brought a woman along who had been caught committing adultery. And making her stand there in full view of everybody, they said to Jesus, Master, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. And Moses has ordered us in the law to condemn women like this to death by stoning. What have you to say? They asked him this as a test, looking for something to use against him. But Jesus bent down and started writing on the ground with his finger. As they persisted with their question, he looked up and said, If there is one of you who has not sinned, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Then he bent down and wrote on the ground again. When they heard this, they went away one by one, beginning with the eldest, until Jesus was left alone with the woman who remained standing there. He looked up and said, Woman, where are they? 
Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she replied. Neither do I condemn you, said Jesus. Go away and don't sin any more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. See, I am doing a new deed. Uh, so says the Lord through the prophet Isaiah in today's first reading. In its original setting, uh, these words relate to Israel's return from exile in Babylon. Isaiah recalls the exodus which had happened many centuries before. And then he says the people who were, as I say, in exile away from their land would experience a new exodus. And so he says, or the Lord says through him, see, I am doing a new deed. Now, part of Lent uh, is actually about uh, understanding, remembering the story of the Old Testament. And I think if we want to get to grips with that, we need to remember two events because the whole story turns on them. And the first is the exodus of the Hebrews, as they're called at that stage, the exodus of the Hebrews from slavery in Egypt. This is usually dated to the 13th century before Christ. And the second is the return of the people of Israel from exile in Babylon, dated to the sixth century before Christ. And in the mind of the Bible, of the Old Testament, and these are the two great deeds which showed and proved, verified the Lord's love for his people. They were both redemptive deeds, they were rescue operations. They reversed the fortunes of the people. They were outbreaks of quite unexpected grace. In the first, the Exodus, the people were rescued from threatened loss of existence. They were a fledgling people. They were like the baby Moses uh, in his basket uh, by, the, by the reeds in the reeds by the river Nile. They were in danger of extinction. Pharaoh had ordered that every male child was to be put to death. So Moses will take his people out of Egypt through water. We know the story well. Uh, and the pursuing Egyptian army would founder in the Red Sea. It's a great epic, and the rest of it is history. The covenant at the foot of Mount Sinai, the 40-year trek through the desert, the crossing of the Jordan and possession of the promised land. And so the ugly duckling, it's just like Hans Christian Andersen, the ugly duckling, this little tribe, Middle Eastern tribe, would by the times of David and Solomon, became become a swan, a strong, free, independent nation in its own right with a famous temple where the Lord dwelt and he could be worshipped. It's a story of Israel rescued from a threat of extinction and given freedom and life land, food, sustenance, a sense of belonging, identity. And this 
is the first, let's say, great biblical deed or the deed of this story of the people. And every Passover commemorates it. But then we remember how the story goes on. Everything starts to unravel. The Exodus bring, comes to this great climax of the kingdom of David and Solomon. But then the people split into two. The northern kingdom, the ten northern tribes, disappear into history. The worship of false gods replaces recognition of the Lord. The leadership is corrupt and fails, and the warnings of the prophets go unheeded. And the upshot of that is foreign invasion, destruction of the city and the temple, loss of land and nationhood, a kind of death. Yet, see, I am doing a new deed. After 70 years of exile, with their harps hung up on the trees of Babylon, suddenly their fortunes are reversed. There is a recreation, a return. See, I am doing something new. Back to the land they go. The path opens up. The temple is rebuilt. The nation is reconstituted. Now, these are two remarkable stories uh, because they do go against the tide of history, especially the second. And on them, uh, the hope of Israel was built, hopes for still more. And the Jewish people still hope for more. They have, after all, in the last century, come back to their land. And this prophetic hope of Israel has entered humanity's awareness, and it's been a leaven of freedom in many different ways. If you think of Martha Luther, Martin Luther King and so on. This is Israel's great gift to the Lord. But what about us? Now, these stories are for us already, but let's take, go back to this phrase, see, I am doing a new deed. That is still there. We still hear that after the exodus, after return from exile. For us, it means Easter. This is the new deed. After exodus, after return from exile, the Lord is doing a new deed, one to which the earlier deeds are simply their preliminary sketches of it, their pointers to it. Now there is something quite new, qualitatively different, Easter, the Easter deed, the forgiveness of our sins through the sacrifice of the cross and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Things that underpin every day, every moment of our life as Christians, underpin our faith and our hope. Now, these events took place in history. Christ was really publicly, visibly crucified or in, and in the case of the resurrection, at least they left traces in history, but they go beyond it. They have broken time and history open, and our own lives and our own selves too. Something has happened. History is too small to hold. Something our mortal lives are too short and too little for, something that needs eternity and resurrection. Easter grows us. Easter enlarges us. Something has happened that takes us not just out of Egypt or ba Babylon, out of slavery or loss of land or nationhood, precious as these things are, but out of deeper losses, deeper threats. Now, our life 
and identity, our freedom, our desire to belong are truly secured. A newness of love, a fullness of God we had never imagined has broken in on the world. The stone, in every sense, has been rolled away, and it has power to lift us forever past every kind of oppression and abandonment and self-sabotage and to wipe away every tear from our eyes. See, says Isaiah, look, he says, behold it. Now this Easter deed isn't a three-day wonder. It's for the whole of our lives and it's forever. It's a deed I am doing, says the Lord, in the present tense. It's underway, it's unfolding. But Holy Week, the Triduum, Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, the Easter Vigil, Easter Day, are given us so that we can see it again, so that we can revisit it, so that we can refresh our sense of it, lest we forget. It's rather like if you go to a restaurant and you order uh, a good wine, the waiter will come round and pour you just a bit. And you take it, you test it, you nod, and you say, yes, this is good, I will have this wine. Well, we could think of the liturgy as the waiter, Jesus as the vintner, the wine is his newness, and we, please God, we are the people invited to taste and see. See, I am doing a new deed. Now, wasn't that exactly the experience of the woman caught in adultery? She had done her deed. It was something seriously wrong, something which made her strictly liable to death by stoning, something she hadn't even done very well. She got caught, and then you wonder, well, where's the man? What happened to him? But suddenly, someone else was looking at her. He was looking at her, not with lust, as if she were meat in a market, not with con contempt, as though she were female trash. It was a new look. New words came too. Words that separated her from her sin, words that forgave, words that freed. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Well, I think she wouldn't. I think she couldn't after this. She was out of the slavery of Egypt, sin, and back from Babylon, condemnation. But more still, she had been, to coin a word, Eastered. She had been forgiven. She was inwardly resurrected. No need to recall the past, says Isaiah. See, I am doing a new deed. Well, may we all experience that this Easter. Easter, let's bring it on. Let us stand and profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Entrusting ourselves to the life-giving power of God, we voice our prayers to the Father. For those journeying towards the Sacrament of Initiation at Easter, Gillian Greens, Mary McIntosh, Daokuro Ineife, Isabel Rodriguez, Marian Blanco, Inga Stasilevich Luce, Duarte Cavallo, and Chris Roy, that they will remain faithful to Christ all the days of their life. Lord, in your mercy, for the leaders of the church, that they may exercise their authority with mercy and so imitate the example of their Lord and Master. Lord, in your mercy. For the nations of the earth, and particularly those in Eastern Europe, that the powerful armies of oppression and hate may be silenced, and that the Lord may reveal paths through the wilderness to a place of just peace and cooperation. Lord, in your mercy. For an end to the pandemic, that the Lord, who always hears the cry of the poor, may listen to our prayer for the afflicted, that the pandemic may be brought to an end. Lord, in your mercy, for all who are tearful with sickness, mourning, or the daily struggle against addiction, for Jack Finney, Ellen Corlett, James Sutherland, Pat Buchanan, Diane Goldie, Preborn twins William and Edward with their mother Belen, Tima Belaquez, Kenneth Sadler, that the gracious love of God may embrace them and the compassion of God's people hold them dear so that their tears may turn into song. Lord, in your mercy. For all who have died, Maria Isabel Sanchez, Michael McCulloch, Kathy McCabe, and Colin Mollo, that they may soon be welcomed into the courts of heaven. Lord, in your mercy. For our personal intention, those of our prayer partners, we pray in silence. Lord, in your mercy. Most merciful Father, forgive our evil doing and remember our sin no more. Prepare our hearts for the passion, death, and resurrection of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We are going to now have our offertory, and there, there will be a second collection this morning at the end after communion, after the communion prayer. But if you are, would like to support the church and its mission, and you're a UK taxpayer, uh, if you're a UK taxpayer and you want to put something in, use the, the envelopes at the end of your bench, and if you could fill that in, that just helps us to claim gift aid, and it really is a, a very important part of our, our income. So thank you if you do that, and thank you for anything you do give. It's very much appreciated. Thank you.
Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you will at our self-denial should give you thanks. Humble our sinful pride, Contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. And we stand and drink this song. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victory, we are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body and spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Hugh our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teeth. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, <clears throat> that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all.
ways. And with your spirit.
Let us pray. We pray, almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. As I mentioned right at the uh, offertory time, we're going to have a second collection for the building fund. So if the stewards would like to come down and uh, start for that collection, please. It's, it's definitely a necessary thing that we need. It's the first sun Sunday of every month that we do this collection. And uh, you may see some of the stuff we're going to be we're, we're spending the money on. In the hall, you'll see that's being repainted. It's soon it's going to be recarpeted. Uh, as of next week, for most of the week, uh, scaffolding will appear inside the church in this area here. And uh, the reason for that is we're going to be cutting off the, the radiators, the, the heating water uh, for the upper pipes. Uh, those of you in that area will see their buckets and stuff, and there's a constant drip for one of these. These pipes have become corroded over time. And, uh, and so rather than try to cut the corroded pipes and weld on new pipes to corroded pipes, uh, which probably won't work. We're just going to, to cut that link there to stop the water from coming in on top of you. So uh, these things both are going to cost us some uh, uh, cash, and whatever you give will help to, uh, to pay for that. The bookshop will be open after Mass as well. Uh, I encourage you to go through for the hospitality, tea, coffee, uh, and uh, whatever else is, is nibbles going on, and you'll also be able to see the new paint job 
that the hall has at the same time. Next week, Wednesday, next week, let's, let's think, let's see. Next week, Friday, we have the next station mass, and that's at St. Joseph's Parish. Please come along to that. It's usually, in fact, invariably, a uh, very lively and uplifting event. Confession starting at 6, if you want. Stations of the Cross, 6.30. Mass at 7 o'clock. All the priests of the diocese of the deanery and uh, of the city, and also parishioners from all over the city gathering together. The music is very lively, very uplifting. And then there's a wonderful reception afterwards. So please come along to that. If you've not been, it's a great, great experience. On uh, Saturday, there's going to be confessions from after the 10 o'clock mass till 4 o'clock. Priests from the city are going to be uh, taking time to come in so that you have time to prepare uh, for Easter by uh, celebrating the Sacrament of Reconciliation. There's also going to be an opportunity on the Wednesday night, the 13th. Uh, not this Wednesday, the Wednesday after. We continue to pray for peace in Ukraine, and one of the ways we're going to be doing that is by having an intense time of prayer, 40 hours of prayer before the Blessed Sacrament. If you'd like to take part in that, have a look at the parish website. You can sign up for that on the, the website. Other things. Uh, the mask mandate is coming to an end on uh, Monday, tomorrow. So you no longer have to wear your mask in the church from tomorrow onwards. Yay. Well, that's a great, great thing. Uh, so what else is going on? What else is going on? I think, I think there's more. I'm being... Is this for, for live stream? So that's Uche waving her hands again. Uche, do you want to wave your hands? That's Uche. She's fantastic. She's uh, coordinating the live stream team, and she's looking for more people who will be willing to help to run the live stream. So if you're interested, have a chat with Uche. We've, got, uh, we've had the music today, wonderfully sung by our children's choir, and John Horton leads that choir. If any of your children want to take part in the choir, they meet on Thursday nights. Wave to the people up there. The kids are waving. Okay, you heard that. 21st of April, they're starting up again, and they're pausing during the Easter holidays. Uh, I think that's about it. There's probably more. Keep your eye on the bulletin. Keep your eye on the parish website for all the things that are, go that are happening. There's a lot happening, so keep your eye on that. Thank you. Please stand for the final blessing and bow your heads. The Lord be with you. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Synod. We are in this synodal process leading to the Synod in Rome uh, next year. So uh, may we all together say this prayer now and then we'll sing the Ave Regina. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name, with you alone to guide us, Make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth 
and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Ave Regina Cellorum. 